Stanislav, I'm not sure which visa path is the best for an engineer, be it electrical engineer, mechanics, civil, software engineer, and so on. My friends, today I'm going to address this very important issue, and also you will learn how to get a free evaluation of your case if you are an engineer. Let's go! Hello, my dear friends. My name is Stanislav Shamayev. I'm a licensed business immigration and corporate attorney in Miami, Florida. Today, I want to address the best visas for the engineers, regardless of the country you are from. What are the current problems that engineers face? Well, first of all, the requirement for the employer, and second of all, the cap and the difficulty to get H-1B visa. And those two things, having an employer and going through H-1B visa is the way that everybody knows and everybody focuses on. But guys, this is the last way for me to get the visa to the US because I know the best ways how to do that. But more about this a little bit later. What are the myths that I hear about engineers if you want to come to the US besides those employer-based EB2, EB3 visas and H1B? I hear two main myths. Number one, I gotta be a Nobel Prize winner, which is not true. I've never got a Nobel Prize winner in my career. I got really good international organized people but never anybody in that category if you guys know anybody send them my way we'll give them a discount and this conception or myth number two a lot of good visas are for scientists and engineers are non-scientists and this is not true either why because engineers fall within stem category and everybody within stem category are a part of the science, be it uh, IT science, be it biology, physics, mathematics, whatever that is. You guys belong to the science category. Now, let's talk about the core visas that do not require to be a Nobel Prize winner and do not require to have an employer. And those are O1A, EB1A, and EB2 in a W. And I know some of you nerds like me would be like, Stanislav, O1 requires an employer. This is correct. But you may become an employer to yourself if we open up a corporation or LLC for you and that company is gonna be your employer although you control 100% of that company. So technically you are right that it does require an employer, but in fact it does not because you are an employer to yourself. EB1A is a self-petition talent visa where you petition for yourself, you don't need no company, no employer. And ep 2 and IW, you are required to propose an idea of an endeavor, think about it as a project. That's a national interest of the United States of America. Now, let me tell you guys, probably around 40% of my practice is for STEM people, IT, engineers, doctors, architects, and people like that. So, uh, all of those people, all those categories and professions get close to 100% approval for my entire practice, which is hundreds upon hundreds upon hundreds of approvals. Meaning that people are like you, are in a huge demand. And how can you prepare for O1 or EB1A cases or for EB2 and IW? And today I'm not gonna give you all those criteria that the guy have awards and judging the work of others and business plans for EB2 and IW. I have a bunch of videos describing that. I want to give you the essence of those visas. So I want you to find the best opportunities to speak at the conferences. If you can publish your papers, do that. 
If you are asked to review the work of other professionals, other engineers, a code review for IT people, architecture review, uh, the business processes, the way something was built or being built, do that because that goes into judging. If you get a chance to write articles and publish them in a reputable technical uh, issues, newspapers, magazines, also don't miss that opportunity and start building your network among people like you because they will be the ones to give you the recommendation letters. And for O1A and EB1A where the criteria are the same, it's enough to prove three criteria. Okay, and working for good companies, making good money, uh, reviewing the work of other professionals is already three criteria. Of course, we want more, but more about this when we see each other in person or through the Zoom conference. Now, EP2NIW is more about what kind of projects you work in the past and how you're going to implement same projects in the future for the US and for the good of the US. Okay, that's EP2NIW in a nutshell. Now, in my company, we specialize in the best approach to find the priority visa for yourself. And you can get it right now through the process called a free evaluation. All you need to do is go down below this video, find the link that says free evaluation, click on it, fill out the questionnaire, and within two days, I'll get back to you to show which visas are best for you, which criteria work, which don't, and look for the word potential. If you see the word potential in your case, that means that working with my team, under my control, with my mythology, my strategy, within the next six months, will build your case to the grade A, will give you more than 90% chance of approval, depending on the visa, maybe even more. So do the free evaluation right now, and wait for good news from me. Now, smash the like button if you enjoyed this video. Make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel, also my Instagram, Telegram, Facebook, X, and other social media platforms. My name is Stanislav Shamayev. I'm a lawyer of the future. Your future begins here. Good luck.